word of God as is written in the New Testament book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, beginning at verse 12 and just two of the following verses. Amen. Just verse 12 and 13. Is that all right this morning? All right. And in your hearing this morning, we're going to read from the New King James Version and then we're going to move just a little bit further. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. You'll find these words. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, reading, understanding, and most importantly, the living, according to his most holy and precious word, you may be seated. Amen? Amen. 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 We have been preaching all year long on our main thing that you can see over here on the east side of the building. It says a new vision for a new life. Amen? Amen? And we know by now that the old man has to be crucified, that the new man may live. Amen? Amen. That there are some things that we've been doing, that there are some ways that we've been living that we have to crucify those things. Amen? Amen? And that we might have this new life and walk in our destiny, walk in our fullness, to walk in our purpose. This month, our monthly theme is total surrender. Amen? Amen? And it comes from Psalm 37 and 7. It says, surrender yourself to the Lord and wait patiently for him. And we know that some of y'all, y'all patience have run out. Amen? <laughs> you're about to throw in the towel. You're about to give up on folk. And you're about to close the door on some situations. Amen? Amen? But God's word says, don't surrender to your problem. Don't surrender to your circumstance. Don't surrender to your ailment, your issue, but surrender to the Lord. Amen. And, amen, we got to put that and on there. That's a connective. That's a conjunction. Amen? amen? Wait patiently for him. Amen? Amen is written in the Bible. Wait, I say on the Lord. Again, I say wait. Amen on the Lord. Amen. Wait patiently for him. Uh, brother, I've been waiting on the Lord five minutes. When is he going to show? No, wait patiently for him. Amen. So I've been waiting the two months. Wait patiently for the Lord. Amen. And we need to learn this month how to surrender to him in patience and wait on him to move. Allow him to move. Allow his plans and his purpose for us to grow and develop into fruition. Amen. You didn't get where you at overnight. Amen. Uh, so I'm talking to somebody this morning. You didn't arrive, whatever your circumstance, whatever your problem, amen. Most of it didn't evolve overnight, amen. We've been working on our issues a long time. We've been digging that hole for ourselves a long time, amen. We've been building walls a long time, amen. The Lord says, now I waited on you. After you've done everything you can for the world, now you want to bring what's left to me, amen. Now you're going to wait on me. Amen, somebody. Amen. I uh, better get quick picking with them, Reverend. Amen. <laughs> and if their patience is running short with me already. As Reverend Ruffin so eloquently reminded us that when we started off this series this month, the very first sermon uh, that the Lord gave me to preach his word was to surrender to him through the pressure. Submit to him through the pressure. Amen? Today, I'd just like to speak with you for a little while to surrender and to be submissive to him through the trouble. Amen? Anybody got trouble in their life this morning? Anybody got trials in their life? We need to learn how to surrender. You know, it's, it's all right. You'll learn, amen, as you walk this Christian journey that when you begin to confess, Amen. When you begin to surrender, when you begin to vocalize and just say, Lord, you're right, it's me. Amen. 
you, you're right. I do have issues. I do have problems. Lord, you're right. I hear your voice talking to me. And it's me that's standing in the need of prayer. It's me that needs fixing. It's me that needs to be rescued. It's me that needs to be delivered. When you're able to let that go and just let God handle it, amen, God will begin to move in your life. God will be able to accomplish some things in your life. But many of us, we want to hold on to those things that so easily beset us. We want to hold on to the sin. We want to hold on to the problem. We don't want to let anything go because of pride. Amen. Because we're ashamed that somebody might see us. Amen. Somebody might understand and look into our closet and see all the skeletons that are living in there that have taken some of us got a whole graveyard. Amen. In our closet. And we just don't want anybody to see because we'd be too embarrassed. But I'm here today to tell you that if you confess your sin, that the Lord is faithful and just not only to forgive you of your sin, but to cleanse you from all that unrighteousness. Amen. Do I have any witnesses in the house that you're not too ashamed to say, you know what? I'm not all that I should be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. God is still working on me. He's still building me. Amen. He's still encouraging me. I have not arrived yet. But please be patient with me because God is not through with me yet. Somebody, I, I, I'm trying to preach this morning, amen? Now, I, I know this is the 11 o'clock crowd, amen? This is not 9 o'clock and we take a little bit longer, amen? I'm just messing with you this morning, amen? All right. All right. Submission through the trials. Many of us, Reverend Lemos, we, we like flying, amen? We like to get where we're going and we like to get there in a hurry. Uh, we, we, we like to bypass the walking, we like to bypass the driving, amen. We, we like to get where we're going so we, we like to fly. Uh, we, we, many of us, we have subscribed and we have signed our name up where we don't have to wait so long going through security procedures and we can bypass the TSA and some of us are even able to fly on a charter flight, amen, because we don't like to wait, we like to fly in order where to get where we're going, amen. And it's all right as a Christian to want to soar in life. Amen? Amen. God has called us to soar. Amen. He's called us. Amen. Uh, he compares us to eagles. Amen. They that wait upon the Lord. Amen. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Amen. I got two or three Bible scholars in the house this morning. So there's nothing wrong with by wanting to soar in life. But one of the things that we don't like to experience is the turbulence. We like the smooth ride. We like the smooth air. Amen. We like the, the comfortable experience. Uh, we don't like to be shaken. And we don't like our flight to be rocked. Amen. We don't like anything to disturb our sleep. Amen. We want to get where we're going and we want to get there smoothly. But we need to understand today that even though we're VIP, we're victorious in praise, we're victorious in purpose, we're victorious in God's plan, but even while we're on our way to our destiny, every flight is not smooth. Right. Sometimes you experience some turbulence, amen. We're still going to get where we're going. We're still going to arrive at our destination, but we're going to experience some turbulence, but we're going to get there despite the turbulence. I'm, I'm trying to talk to somebody this morning. You, you experience some, some things in your life, amen, and you're wondering, will you ever arrive? Will your dream ever come into fruition? Uh, when will your breakthrough come? Amen. But you need to understand today that you're still going to get to your destination despite the turbulence. Many people who have accepted Christ expected that there would be no difficulties, there would be no trials, there would be no rough waves, no rough air. But Reverend, the reality is, is that it does get a little rough every now and then. Amen. We were just talking on Wednesday Night Recharge about how the struggle is real. It is challenging, church, trying to live holy in an unholy world. You know, it, it, it's hard, amen, to maintain our composure sometimes, amen. People will step on your last nerve, uh, that nerve that you don't use no more, amen. They, they'll put some words back in your vocabulary, amen. You've been trying to erase it, amen. You've been trying to put it on the back burner. You've tried to throw it into the sea of forgetfulness, but I'm, I'm talking to somebody in here today, amen. Somebody will get on that last nerve, Amen. Amen. Y'all y'all see Reverend Lee. Y'all don't know Adrian. Amen. That's from a way, long way back. That was a long way back. Amen. It's challenging trying to live a holy life in the unholy world. Paul put it this way, that when I try to do my best, 
Amen. When I try to do what's right, amen, evil is always present. It's always popping up. It's always showing up. Amen. It's always rearing its ugly head, even when I'm trying to do my best. And church, we have to come to grips with the reality that the devil is always busy. The devil is always on his job. He's always on the prowl, always trying to do some things that will cause us to crumble. Yes. The reality is that he will do some things to prevent us from pursuing our purpose. Right. He'll do some things to prevent us from reaching our destiny. Uh, that's who he is. That's what he does. And if we're real with ourselves today, we have to acknowledge that he does his job and he does his job well. Amen. Jesus talked about Satan's assignment in John's Gospel, chapter 10, where he said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what the devil's job is. That's what he does. So, church, we need not be surprised. Come on now. Come on. I need to say that to somebody today because the devil is coming at you this morning. The devil is coming at you in many different directions. Some of us, he's coming through our job. Some of us, he's coming at us through our finances. Some of us, he's even coming through us in our family. He's going to keep coming at us because that's his job, and he does his job well. Amen. I hear you, sisters. He said very well. Amen. But church, there's no reason for us to get depressed. There's no reason for us to go commit suicide. There's no reason for us to throw in the towel just because the devil is busy in your life. Because I'm here today to tell you that if you're doing anything for the Lord, the devil is going to be busy in your life. Uh, that's going to be the sign, amen, that you're on the right track. Uh, that's going to be the sign that you're doing something right because the devil is going to be busy. He's going to try to get you to throw in the towel. Yeah, yeah. But church, while we're expecting these trials and while we're expecting the storms, while we're expecting the tribulations, we also need to expect to make it through. Yeah. Amen. We expect some rough mountains. We expect to be down in some valleys. Amen. You do know how to go through some valleys. Amen. Yeah. To get to your destiny. But we have to expect to make it through because God is ultimately in control. We have to be reminded of that church sometimes because, you know, it seems like everybody has an impact. Everybody has an influence. Everybody got something to say about our situation. But for the Christian, God is ultimately in control. So that means that we have to be disciplined enough. We have to be focused enough and understand that just because the devil is busy, that doesn't mean that we have to walk away. That doesn't mean to say, you know what, bro, this ain't for me. Amen. Amen. We got folk today that are saying, this marriage ain't for me. Amen. We got folk today that say, you know what? I've been working with this relative, this child a long time. Amen. I'm <laughs> leave you in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Just because the devil is busy, that doesn't mean that you have to walk away or say this is not for you. It's simply a sure sign that the Lord is on your side. As a matter of fact, when you read a passage of scripture where Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy, keep in mind that that's not the end of the conversation. Amen? That's not the end of the scripture. Jesus didn't stop right there. Hallelujah. Jesus continued and said, I am come. Amen? That they might have life. Amen? And that they might have it more abundantly. Amen? We need to dig into that today. We need to wrap our hopes and our dreams around that today. Amen? And what the Lord is saying is, what he's really saying there, church, is, I got your back. The Lord is saying, I got your situation. That's a reminder to us. That should serve as our encouragement that whatever the devil brings into your life, God is ultimately in control of your situation. The psalmist said it this way in Psalm 37, 23. He said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Amen. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And what that means, church, is that your trial, your storm, your situation is custom made for you. When you get into that word order, it means that it's been custom made for you. Now, I, I, I'm like many of you, amen, I have never been uh, blessed enough, I've never arrived at the point where I can afford a custom-made suit, amen, but I know somebody that does, amen. Amen. Wow. 
watching me. They be playing me. This suit, I want you to go ahead and put that up, brother. I have problems putting my suit up. Amen. It's all that spiritual increase. Amen. <laughs> this suit is custom made for this brother. Amen. Amen. It, it, it fits. It looks marvelous. It looks wonderful. Amen. You got the creases in the pants. The shoes are shining. And, amen. The socks are even magnificent. Amen. <laughs> it, it, it looks good. It fits him. Amen. This suit. It's custom made, amen. This suit is from the Ruffin Collection, amen. <laughs> this shirt, amen, it, it, it fits his neck. This tie goes with his suit. It's custom made for him, talk, talk. amen. Now, I, I, it, it, try as I might, I will not be able to fit into the Ruffin Collection suit, amen. <laughs> This suit is not built for my frame. It's not built for my height. Amen. My neck is a little too thick for this shirt. Amen. If I try to put it on, I'll choke myself to death. Amen. But just like his suit, he has trials that are custom made for him. Amen. His trials are not like my trials. His, his storm is going to be a little bit different than my storm. Amen. But we have the same victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, give Reverend Ruffin a hand for sharing with us. Amen. I might want to see that tie a little bit later. Amen. <laughs> Your trial is custom made for you. Amen. Amen. God said in his word that he'll never put more on you than you can bear. Amen. Amen. He said he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Whatever he's bringing you through is custom made for you. Amen. If he says you're not, it's not going to be more than you can bear, guess what? Amen. You're going to be able to make it through. Amen. If he says he's not going to leave you or forsake you, his presence is going to be with you even in the midst of whatever you're going through. It's custom made for you. And when we understand that our trial is custom made for us, then there's some things that we ought to expect. Amen. When we put on that trial. The number one thing that we need to expect is we need to expect a test. Amen. When you put on Christianity, amen, expect a test. Amen. And what God is trying to identify is what level of faith do you have. Amen. Turn around and look at the neighbor that's sitting next to you and look at him, give him a big old smile and ask him, where you at? <laughs> where is your faith? What level of faith are you? Amen. Where do you need to grow? What areas do you need to expand? What areas are weak? Amen. What area are you struggling with? What area are you having problems? Amen. God will allow you to walk through a test. There's some testing, amen, in your life that you have to go through in order for you to see, amen, where you are. Yeah, yeah. And some of us, we're repeating the same test over and over and over, amen. I remember as a senior, we had classes that we had to take, and you couldn't take them till you were a senior. They were economics, they were American government, and American history, amen. If you fail any one of those classes, you didn't walk. <laughs> you did not receive your diploma. Amen? Yes. Say amen somebody. Amen. And I remember very specifically, I was going through my list of teachers as I was constructing my schedule. Amen. What teacher do I want for economics? Amen? Uh, I, I might want this instructor, but I sure don't want that instructor. Amen? <laughs> I want to walk. Amen? Uh, when I had American history, what teacher did I, oh, praise the Lord, I got this teacher. Amen? And thank God I didn't get that teacher. But for American government, there was only one teacher in the entire school that taught American government. That was the Reverend Charles Johnson, the assistant principal. Amen? And Reverend Johnson had no grace and no mercy. Amen? If you were late, you got two zeros. If you're absent, you got two zeros. You failed a test, you got two zeros. You came with an excuse, you got an extra two zeros. <laughs> Reverend Johnson didn't play, <laughs> amen? And what we learned to expect was that every morning, every single morning after the bell would ring, amen, Reverend Johnson would come in and he would immediately begin by saying, good morning class, article one, section two, clause three. <laughs> and he would start asking questions. He would ask a 10 question quiz every single morning. And I can tell you that after a couple of folk got two zeros those first days, those first two days, 
Everybody was expecting that test <laughs> the next day. We expected to be quizzed. We expected to be right away. Amen. There was no warm-up period. He would just walk in the room. We expected that test every single day. So guess what that did for our preparation level? We raised our level of expectation for our preparation. Amen. So in this Christian walk, it's the same way. You have to expect that you're going to have a test. Your faith will be tested. Amen. Your commitment will be tested. Jesus said, you will be persecuted for my sake. Amen. He said, if any man would follow me, amen, you have to first deny yourself, and then you have to pick up your cross, amen. You're going to be tested. We don't, we don't like to be tested, Reverend. I'm not getting that this morning, amen. We have to expect a test to show us where our faith is, what level of faith we're at. And then, church, we have to expect some refining, amen. We have to expect some Refining. Okay. That means some stuff has to be burned off. Some things that were discovered in the test have to be burned off. Amen? Amen. Some of us have some things in our life that need to be burned off. We haven't burned it off yet. Amen? We haven't learned our lesson yet. Amen? Some of us are still going back to the same arena we've been losing in. We've been going down to the same liquor store. We've been smoking the same cigarette. Somebody, amen, this morning. Uh, that might not be your issue, but that one thing you do, the Ten Commandments, I got one, two, three, four, oh. That one thing I do has got to be burned off. Amen? And you're wondering why you continue to face the same test, why you continue to be challenged in the same area. There are some things that God is saying need to be burned off. And if you don't understand the test, if you're not of a mind and a spirit to move into a situation where you're passing the test, then you might hear God say every now and then you need to understand that the Lord will turn up the heat. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody in here today. Amen. Uh, you've been cruising through life. You've been doing the same thing. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked as a man soweth. Also shall he reap. And God will turn that heat up in order to burn some stuff up. You've been asking yourself, why is my life like this? Because the Lord has turned the heat up. Why is my marriage going through some stuff? Because the Lord has turned the heat up. Why are my prospects getting up? Because the Lord is turning the heat up in order to get you to move. The Lord is saying to you, I need to get some stuff off of you because I can't move you into your purpose. I can't move you into your destiny. I can't move you where I want you to be because you're hanging on to this stuff and I got to burn some stuff off of you. Some of us have to have some things burned off. Some of us have to have some people burned out of our lives because they've been holding us back. Amen? Some of us have to be moved out of our comfort zone. We've gotten too comfortable in a certain... God says, I got to turn the heat up in order to move you off the couch. Amen, somebody. So I can move you into your purpose, into your destiny. But what he's telling the church in this scripture is don't be surprised. Amen. Uh, church, we all act like we're brand new. Amen. The Lord, in order to move us somewhere, will turn up the heat. And what he's saying is when you experience these trials, when you go through this stuff, when the heat has been turned up, act like you've been here before. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing, something unusual, something out of the ordinary, amen? Yeah. Like we've yeah. never seen problem before. Some of us yeah. get in a situation and we're about to lose our mind, amen? We, we, we fall into a situation, some things come up against us, and there, there's something that happened, there's somebody that talked about us, there's somebody that's stepping on that last nerve, and we act like we're about to lose our mind. Like we've never seen that before. Like we've never experienced trouble. Like we've never had a problem. Like we've never had to fall on our knees. Like we've never had to stretch out upon God and cry out upon God. We act like we've never been there before. So something strange or unusual was happening to us. And what God is saying is quit acting shocked when they talk about you. Quit acting uncomfortable when situations. Quit acting like you've never been through the valley before. Quit acting like you never climbed up a rough mountain before. Lord, why me? Why I have to go through this again? No, that's just part of your journey. That's part of your walk. That's part of your growth experience. So don't be surprised by these things. The Lord has something custom made for you, and you're going to be all right. And we just need to remind ourselves that sometimes, now look at that person sitting next to you, let's give her some encouragement this morning. Say, you know what, brother, you know what, sister? You're going to be all right. Amen. 
y'all don't sound too convincing this morning. <laughs> if the Lord brought you to it, then the Lord will bring you through it. You just got to keep looking up to him even when life looks down. Amen? When your life appears to be down, you got to look to the hills from which come in your help. The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. Brother Joel put it this way. He said, man born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Amen. Those same three Bible scholars. Amen. <laughs> so you ought to understand that when you're growing, you're going to experience some trouble. You need to understand that when God is trying to move you, you're going to experience some trouble. You got to understand when you're making progress, when you're stepping out on faith, when you're stepping out on purpose in your day, when you've made up your mind that you're going to do something for the Lord, you need to understand that you're going to experience some trouble. Amen? Amen. Well, what's going to help us, brother? We, you've been telling us about this trouble and these problems all morning. All right? What's going to help us? First of all, there's about five things I want you to remember when we're going through these things that help us to have that attitude, to act like we've been there before. Number one, we have to reflect. Amen? We have to look at the rearview mirror of our life. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not plans for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now, when I dig into that a little while, amen, I need to understand that, you know what? What God is saying is, is that I have a future plan for you. I have a future already mapped out for you. I have things for your destiny. I have things for your purpose. I have plans for your life. Amen? And if God is saying, I have plans for your life, if God is saying you have a future, and if God is saying that you have hope, then who am I to say I have no hope? Who am I to look down and say I have no future? Who am I to write off God? God is telling you today, God is speaking to somebody today that you think you're at the end of your rope. You walk as far as you, you fought as hard as you can fight. Amen. It's the 10th round and 2 minutes and 59 seconds and you're about to throw in the towel. And God is saying, hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on one more second. Hold on one more day. I want to give you a future. I want to give you a hope because the plans I have are for your welfare mm -hmm. and not for evil. Uh -huh. We need to look back on what God has done, what God has already brought us through. How far, if you look back over your life, into the rearview yeah. mirror of your life, and you see that time after time you've been in trouble, time after time you've had problems, time after time you've been sick, time after time people talk about you, time after time you might have been in an unemployment line, time after time you prayed and you look for an answer, every single time God delivered you from your situation. Every single time he answered your prayer, every single time. Amen. You're here today so you didn't die. Amen. You might have been on a hospital bed yesterday, but I see you sitting here today. Yeah. Amen. You might have been there, about to lose your mind yesterday, but here you are this morning. Amen. Clothed with enough right mind to come out to the house of prayer where you can get some help this morning. God brought you. God brought you. God did it. We ought to remember what God has done for us. We ought to remember that he didn't leave us by the side of the road. We ought to remember the times when he put food on the table. We ought to remember the times he put gas in the table. We ought to remember the time that we were struggling to make it through in our business and God brought a client right through, right on time. And then when we reflect on the goodness of God and the mercy of God and the grace of God and how God has delivered us in the past, James says we ought to rejoice. James says, my brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into various trials, don't despair. Don't fall into a depression. Don't be in a depression penthouse. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And then once you got patience, let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect, that means mature, amen, that you are growing into your fullness, into your purpose, into your destiny, perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Understand this, very often when Jesus encountered people that were going through trials, that were going through sickness, that were going through situations that had issues in their life, Jesus didn't ask of just any old question. He would very often ask them, will you be made whole? 
You might think you need something, amen. That might be in your right mind what you think you need for that particular moment. But Jesus is not saying simply, do you need to, does your leg need to be healed? Does your heart need to be healed? Does the cancer need to be cured? Jesus is saying, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be complete? Do you want to be mature? And there's too many of us walking around out here, we're incomplete. Our marriages are incomplete. Our families are incomplete. Our community is so incomplete. Unity, amen, in the community, amen. Unity does not mean that we're all alike. All right. Unity doesn't mean we all come from the same place. Unity doesn't mean that we all like the same thing. We're all the same color. Unity means that we're all on one accord, amen. Unity means that we're working together to make our community better. Unity means that we're, the Bible says that they will know that you are my disciples by the love you have one for another. If I love my brother and I love my sister and we're working together because we love one another, then we'll experience unity. Say amen, somebody. Amen. He says, you'll be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If you, ask, if you lack wisdom, ask God. He'll give it to you liberally. And without reproach, amen, he's not going to scold you for asking him for wisdom. Let him ask in faith with no doubting because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea. There's that turbulence again, amen. Tossed by the wind. Let that man don't suppose he will get anything from the Lord because he's double-minded and unstable in all his ways. But he says when you go through these things, when you experience these different trials, these different situations, count it all joy. You know what? I'm going through something right now, but I know God must be moving. Amen? Uh, I'm experiencing a little, but God must have a plan. Amen? Uh, things are getting dark, but there's some sunshine somewhere because I know my God. Amen? I know deliverance is around here somewhere because my God said that he came that I might have life. Uh, I, I, I might have people that are cursing me, but my God says I'm going to be blessed. So I know it's got to be a blessing somewhere around here. Amen? So I'm going to count it all joy. I'm going to rejoice because I know that a move of God is imminent. Amen? Amen? My forecast looks bright. My forecast looks good. Amen? Today might be a rainy day, but thank God that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And when I know that joy comes in the morning, I can rejoice right now. And then Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8 that we need to remind ourselves. He says in 828, and we know, you need to understand this, he's talking to the church, amen? Do, do you know? Amen? Do, do we know? There's some things that we need to know. He says, and we know that all things, no matter how bad, no matter how depressing, no matter how discouraging, no matter how they try to push us back, all things, no matter how left out it makes us feel, no matter how downtrodden we may be, all things work together. That means what the devil is trying to do, amen, God will turn that around and use it for my good, amen. No matter if somebody is out there plotting against me, God will turn that around, amen. No matter what I'm going through right now, no matter if it seems like my life is going downhill, there's got to be a U-turn around here somewhere because God will turn it around because all things work together for my good to those who love God and those who are the call according to his purpose. You need to understand, you keep hearing this word over and over, God has a purpose for your trial. God has a purpose for the turbulence in your life. Yes, sir. And it's working for your good. And then Joshua reminds us that we need to rehearse. We need to rehearse. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, he says, the Lord talking to Joshua when he's moving Joshua into his destiny. They've been walking around in this same pattern for 40 years, amen? They, they've been discouraged. They've been facing the giant enemies. They've been facing starvation, but God has provided manna. They were facing thirst, but God continued to provide water. They didn't know if that custom-made suit that from the roofing collection was going to last. But the Bible says they walked all 40 years and there, nothing was wrong with their suit. Their shoes didn't wear out. Amen? This is God moving Joshua into his destiny. He told Moses to prepare Joshua because I have a purpose for Joshua. I have a mission for Joshua. Joshua is not going to die out here with the rest of these grasshopper folk. 
that are walking around scary, that are walking around in fear, that are walking around in doubt, that don't trust me, that don't trust my ability, that don't believe that God is able to sustain them, that God is not able to provide for them, that God is not able to deliver them. God has a plan for Joshua to lead his people into the promised land. And Joshua is telling, the Lord is telling Joshua in verse 8 that this book, uh -huh. amen, of the law shall not depart from your mouth. That means that we have to rehearse speaking the word of God. And I got to tell somebody in here today that you got people that are surrounding you. You got people in your clique, in your crew. You got people in your atmosphere that are having a negative influence on your spiritual life. I got to tell you that this morning. Amen. Uh, you need to study the Bible. They want to go play. Amen. Uh, you need to go pray. Amen. They want to go do something else. Amen. Uh, you believe in God. They believe in something else. Amen. And they're trying to distract you. They're trying to dissuade you. They're trying to deter you from reaching your purpose and your destiny. You have people that will tell you you're not going to make it. You can't do this. Oh, girl, you need to leave them. But, bro, I wouldn't put up with that one more day. Amen. There's plenty of fish out there in the sea. Amen. Yeah, you go out there and swim in that sea for a little while. Amen. Amen. God got a husband and a wife custom made for you. Amen. And while God is building them, God was working on you and working on them where you're fitting together, where you're growing together. You're going to put that aside. You're going to throw all that away. Amen. You've been married 18 years. You've been married 20 years. You've been married 7 years. And you're going to throw that all away. Now you got to start over from scratch with some other... Amen, somebody. No, no, no. Amen. We might not be getting along today, amen, but we got along with the last 18 years. Amen. I'm sticking with the one that brought me, amen. He's preparing Joshua to move into the promise, and he's saying that this book of the law should not depart from your mouth. Amen. So you have to learn how to speak positive the word of God. You need to know how to speak life and growth and truth into your life, which is found in the Word of God. Uh, you can, I don't care what you log on to. I don't care who you go and see. I don't care how many sheep scans they got on the wall. If it don't line up with the Word of God, amen. the wisdom of man shall fail, but the Word of God, amen, will never fail. He says, not only do you keep it in your mouth, but you have meditate on it day and night. Rehearse it in your mind. Rehearse it in your spirit. And, amen. Those of us that used to have, I don't know, some of y'all look mighty young, but some of us like me that are uh, a little bit older than 50, yeah. we remember the eight-track tape, amen? <laughs> and that eight-track would just play, as long as you left it in there, it would play over and over and over and over again, amen? As long as you left it on, it would just keep cycling over and over and over again. That's what he's saying, that you meditate on these in your spirit, in your mind. What does the word of God say? That in that moment of truth, in that moment of trial, in that moment of storm, that you remember that you're able to recall the word of God. He says that if you meditate on it day and night, if you keep the word in your mouth, you promise speaking life into your situation, then you'll be able to do according to all that's written in it. Amen. And there's people that are looking, amen, for things. They're looking for a way out. They're looking for an excuse. They're yeah. looking for reasons to just abandon. Amen. When the word of God said, no, remain steadfast. When the word of God says, stand still. And know that I am God. Amen. I'm talking to somebody in here today. There's somebody in here right now. You planning to move, amen, that God is telling you, I better not make that move. Somebody here today, you got a decision you've been perusing in your mind. I mean, you've been thinking about it, amen? And you're getting ready to push, push, push the button on it. You're getting ready to pull the trigger on it. And God is telling you today that no, you don't. You'll find yourself in some trouble if you do. He says, if you do what's written in my word, then you will make your way prosperous, your journey, your flight. Then you'll make it to your destination prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong in your trial. Be strong in the face of your enemy. Be of good courage. Do not be afraid, as Reverend Toll, uh, Reverend Toll, Deacon Toll said earlier, that is a, a demonstrative word. Amen? That is a command. That is not a question. That is not a suggestion. It says, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. 
For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And we need to rehearse that in our mind. That's why David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. I don't have to make that a sprint. Amen. I don't have to act like I've never been through this valley before, like somebody chasing me, like something's going to get me, like something's going to catch up to me that I can't handle. Because thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. Amen. They comfort me. He's saying that I can feel the presence of the Lord. I know that God has got me. I know that God has my back. I know that God has my situation in his control. So I can just take my time. <laughs> Amen. Through the valley. I don't have to act scared. I don't have to lose my mind. I don't have to act like I've never been here before. Like I've never seen trouble, like I've never seen problems. Like I've never seen the work of the Lord, amen. Like I've never seen the hand of God on my life. Like I've never seen his rod, amen, come down and strike my enemy, amen. Like God has never snatched me, amen, from the hands of the enemy. Preach. We need to recognize. We need to recognize. Rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. Jesus Christ came down here to suffer. You, you do know that, right? Amen? Amen. When, when, they, when Jesus came, there were many in the synagogues that were looking for Jesus to come down and destroy all the enemies. For Jesus to come down and sit on the throne. For Jesus to come down and exalt them for Jesus to come down but Jesus came here to suffer yes, oh, that's why he's called a suffering servant yes, sir. Yes, sir. the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life yeah. and all of the sacrifices that were made in the Old Testament yeah. you can read it at your leisure you can see all the animals that had to be killed all through yeah. the year all day and all night how the blood ran kept running from the tabernacle from the temple yeah. and it still wasn't enough yeah. but God said that he so loved the world, that he cares about us so much, that he loves us so much, that he gave his only begotten son. That son came down here to suffer the iniquity. Amen? Our iniquity was on him. The chastisement of our peace was on him by his stripes. His suffering, we were healed. And to the extent that we partake of his suffering. That means we have to go through some of the same thing. If Jesus can go through it, yeah. Yeah. we can go through some stuff. Amen? It says that to the extent that we partake of his suffering, that when his glory is revealed, yes. that's good news, somebody. Come on. That we may also be glad when they see the joy. Amen? Right. What that means is Jesus died on the cross. After he suffered on that cross, after they broke his skin, after they placed that crown of thorns on his head, after they mistreated him so, after they falsely accused him, after they put the mock trial in, after they brought the fake news on him, after his closest friends deserted, he hung on that cross. He had to carry that cross down the Via Dolorosa to his, his dying site, amen, to his execution site. Yes. Yeah. They hung him on the cross. Yes. They pushed the crown of thorns on his head. The soldier pierced him in the side where blood and water came out of his side. Yeah. He suffered on that cross. Yes, he did. He died on that cross. Yes. The Bible says he died willingly. He gave up the ghost. Gave it up. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. Yeah. Amen? amen? So that your sins and my sins Yes. could be redeemed so that your yes. sins and my sins the price could be made for yes. he bled he died yes. for yes. but hallelujah after three days yes. after three days that ball tomb had to give up the savior amen yes. after three days the grave had to <laughs> he came out walking amen the bible says that Jesus took them grave clothes off he folded them up <laughs> you know ain't nothing messy about my savior amen <laughs> Put on glory. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When he comes, he says, no, I'm going away. Let not your heart be troubled. Deacon read this earlier. Right. You believe in God, also believe in me. Right. In my father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you. I go away to prepare a place. That's right. Amen. I'm preparing you to receive that place. I'm going away to prepare a place that where I am, you may be also. Yeah. Amen. Yes. And my Bible also says that one day this eastern sky is going to crack open with a shout, with the trump of the archangel. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The dead in Christ are going to rise. Yeah. We that remain, if anybody's yeah. still here that believe in Jesus that's walking around, the ones that's dead are going to come up first, and then we're going to be caught up with him and meet him in the air. And as he comes back in his glory, all of a sudden, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, all of us will have that same glory. Amen? That same glory. But the marvel of it is, is that we don't have to wait until that day to rejoice. Amen? In the midst of your trial, in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your tribulation, will you submit to the Lord today? Will you surrender to Jesus? You've been trying it your way. Will you turn it over to the Lord? Amen. Lean and trust on the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Yes. With all your heart. Trust in the Lord and in all your situations. Trust in the Lord. No matter what the world says, no matter what your climate is today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yes. Lean not to your own understanding. Don't look at it with your natural eyes, but in all your ways, in all your ways, how you act through trial, how you act through storm, how you act in the good times and the bad, in all your ways, all your decision making, all your planning, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. God bless you, God keep you. Family Community Church of Fresno is empowering millions of people around the world through dynamic preaching and teaching, humanitarian aid, and many other ministry efforts. For additional information and resources from Family Community Church, please visit www.familycommunitychurch.com or call 559-323-5002. We love you and look forward to serving you in the kingdom.